Today we're going to talk about the hook, the hook on the string, and how important it is, especially for Olympic style recurve, to keep it in a manner that will help you set the clicker off easier and be able to shoot tighter groups downrange with a lot more consistency if you do your job correctly in keeping your hook as you go to draw the bow back. This does also affect other styles of single string archery or any finger style shooter. Keeping your hook is vitally important to consistency and I'll explain why in this video. You're watching the Jake Minsky YouTube channel. So today we're going to be talking about the hook, as I've said already. That means the three fingers that you place on the string as you go to draw back your Olympic style recurve, bare bow, traditional bow, whatever single string bow you're using, or even if you're shooting fingers on a compound. Specifically, we'll talk about how important it is to keep the hook in the placement that you put it on on the string until you get it back to full draw. How important that is and why it's important. It's a huge contributing factor to consistency from shot to shot, especially in regards to timing, how much draw length you have, or how consistent you are to set the clicker off, depending on the style of shooting you're using, of course. So we all know that with a single string bow, uh, there is no draw stop. So the length that you pull the bow back is very, very important. So if you don't have a clicker on an Olympic style recurve, your draw length is super critical to specifically vertical groups in the most, for the most part, downrange because as you draw the bow back further it gets more power more weight and you know that affects your accuracy and your consistency downrange so even if you're not wanting to shoot target archery or tournament archery or anything like that shooting with a consistent hook and being very consistent in the way you do it is vitally important to groups downrange before i get too far into this video. If you're looking for a resource on how to shoot a bow like I do, a little bit more in depth, actually a lot more in depth, this book is called Total Archery. It's written by my coach Kesik Lee as well as an old teammate of mine, Tyler Benner. I have links in the description below for where they're available on my website, jkaminski.com, as well as Amazon links if you'd prefer to buy it there. Now with that being said, the hook, the fingers on the string, why it's important, why consistency is important. There's a couple of things that I'll talk about. I'm not gonna to touch on them super in depth today as far as how to do it. I have already created a video on how to hook the string, ideally exactly how I do. I'll have links in the description below for that and a card at the top up there as well. Uh, but specifically, three fingers, split fingers, three under, doesn't matter. Two fingers, I suppose, would work as well. But the most important thing is to note to be consistent, to put it in the same exact place every single time, to hook the string in the same way every single time. I don't care where you put the string, which knuckle you put it on, where you put it on your fingers, how much tension is on each finger, I don't care, that's not important. What's important is the consistency. The consistency from shot to shot, from day to day, from arrow to arrow in a tournament, or whatever it is that you're doing, that's how you get consistency downrange. So visually checking your fingers to make sure you put them on the string every single time until you at least develop a feel on how it feels where I put the string on my fingers. That's gonna be key to your starting point is to visually check and just put the string in the same place every single time before you look at the target and you go to draw back the bow. That's gonna be super critical for performance. So not only where you put them on the, on the string, so how deep you may hook, how on the fingertips you are, and then also you take it to the next step, how much pressure you're putting on your fingers when you're setting the fingers on the string. That can be down here, or it can be the pressure on your fingers here at full draw. The placement on the string affects the tune dramatically, can obviously affect your draw length, but this vertical pressure difference here affects the vertical impact points on the target dramatically. More index finger curl versus more ring finger curl will have a lot of variance in the impact point downrange. Even at close distances, as, as close as 10 meters, you'll see a big difference there, let alone going back to the furthest distances we shoot in competitions, 90 meters, at least with Olympic style recurve, you'll miss the target easily if you changed uh, a lot on the actual finger pressure. So how you get to that point, how you get consistent is number one, visually check. Number two, feel it, pay attention to it, and actively try to control it. Very important. But in addition to that, and really the crux of why I wanted to create this video, is I've had a few people uh, messaging me and asking me specifically about the hook 
and asking for help on it because it feels like, you know, inconsistent from shot to shot or something like that. They're just noticing that they're having a difficulty either keeping their fingers on the string because they're slipping off and wanting to fall off the string or they just can't keep the hook and, you know, they feel like it's creeping out of their fingers. So specifically, what needs to happen to remedy a situation that is extremely common that most people don't even recognize they're doing, losing their hook when they are drawing the bow back or losing their hook once they are, have gotten to full draw and if they're shooting recurve, as they're expanding through the clicker to set it off, people will lose their hook. And that is so important to not do. So once you get back to full draw, if you haven't lost your hook, as you come into anchor, as you go to expand to set the clicker off, you don't want to see this happening where you're losing your hook, something like that. You also don't want to set your hook here to then lift the bow and as you go to draw back, completely change the way you're hooking the string and potentially even dropping fingers off the string. In my opinion, it's vitally important to keep the hook here all the way to anchor, all the way through expansion and through release and follow through without even moving it the tiniest fraction of a millimeter or an inch. You, you need to keep it the same from here all the way up through the entire cycle. And what's required is actually adding more finger tension on the string when you're drawing the bow back. A lot of people don't really even think of it, at least to a level of detail that would seem quite obvious if you did, in that down here, the tension is minuscule, a few pounds, maybe a few ounces even, depending on the weight of the bow, the draw weight of the bow. But by the time you get it back, this one in particular, about 18 pounds, nothing. This is just a light bow I use for demonstration purposes. My Olympic style recurve on the bow, ground down there, 48 to 50 pounds. You know, this bow back here, 40 pounds. Whatever it is, as you are drawing the bow back, it's getting heavier and heavier and heavier. So you must then also squeeze more when you're going through the drawing cycle or add tension in your forearm to squeeze your flexors to keep the hook so you don't lose it as you draw the bow back. A lot of people will just try to keep it the same, you know, the same tension, the same effort, the same whatever. And as the bow gets heavier, the bow starts winning and then their fingers start to open, they start to lose their hook and then their draw length is changing. Now I keep referencing draw length specifically because if my anchor is in a consistent place, say I use bone to bone contact, or if I'm shooting bare bow traditional style or something like that and I hook behind my jawbone, but if I'm hooking behind my jawbone and I have my proper hook versus a lesser hook or even worse, something of some sort of variance, it's going to change my draw length probably, I don't know, up to a quarter inch plus, a centimeter or so, that's a lot, that's a big change. And so how can you possibly expect to set the clicker off consistently in the same speed, the same rhythm, the same cadence from shot to shot, if as you're drawing the bow back, you're losing your hook, you're losing that curl of the fingers. In addition to the draw length changing, what is even more so important, in my opinion, potentially, at least, not in the extreme case, when you're only losing ever so tiny amounts of your hook as you're drawing the bow back or as you're expanding, is that as something is moving and it's not static, in my opinion, you'll feel more of a difference when it is static if something is not perfect or consistent from shot to shot. So what do I mean by that? I mean that as I'm losing my hook as I'm drawing, I'm not gonna notice that I've changed the relationship of the three fingers of pressure you know, the each individual finger pressure on the string. I'm not gonna notice that, oh, I lost all of my index finger pressure because, you know, it came off the string or I lost all my ring finger and it almost is even slipping off the string. You won't notice that you're losing or changing or manipulating or anything if you have movement going on because your body's going to feel the movement and not necessarily feel the pressure change. I hope that makes sense. So. If you do your job correctly to keep the hook the whole time as you draw it back, you'll notice when you make a mistake, when you lose 5%, 3%, 2% of the hook or the pressure or whatever it is, you'll notice it when your goal is or when your ideal is to not move it at all. But if you lose, say, 30% of your hook every single time, yes, if you shoot 
thousands and thousands and thousands of barrels, you'll probably be able to do it fairly consistently. And I've seen the highest scoring shooters, the, some of the people that I actually respect the most, they have lost their hook or they do lose their hook as they draw back or as they come through the, the clicker, sometimes their fingers will move. But one thing that they all have in common, those people, is that they have literally decades and decades of experience. Hundreds of thousands of arrows shot the exact same way. And so they can recognize when things have changed. But if you're new, you're developing, or if you do this rec recreationally, you really want to have a little bit more focus on keeping the hook. So that way you can notice when you change ever so slightly and it should result in much tighter groups downrange. Before I go, quick reminder, some new designs, new apparel designs, I'll have links in the description below and a card at the top up there. I believe also underneath this video, there is a banner uh, that you can check out a few of the designs. But if you go to my Teespring account, you'll see I have a couple of new designs between the Backyard Archery Champion to another String Walker design, thanks to Ryan for working on a few new designs. And quickly, I do offer coaching. I do offer in-person lessons as well as digital options. Uh, one of the more popular ones digitally and actually the thing that gets you probably the most bang for your buck as far as the digital options are concerned is a video coaching review. Definitely check that out. Anyway, I'll have links in the description below to my website, jkaminski.com, in case you're interested in uh, setting up a coaching session with me.